Welcome back, dear friends. Another exciting day in the workshop, and I've had a haircut. I usually do it myself um, with one of those things just by feel, but my wife helped me last night, so I assume it looks really nice. Anyway, exciting, even more than a haircut, is it's time to sort out the servos. I'll show you what I've been up to. And I've remembered to switch the fan off so it doesn't all sort of get the sound of wind. Now, look, I think I'd shown you that a bit. So we've got the amplifier fixed down and that works and the volume control. This very morrow I have worked out how to fix down the Teensy and its soundboard. Luckily the soundboard comes with three very big holes. So I've made little spaces and got that. Turned some very board upside down, soldered that on. So I've started connecting things. That's ground, not volts, and the TX and RX for the serial communication. Now I've got to work out what I'm connecting, where I'm connecting it to, and then make the changes on the sketch for the Teensy. So I can actually say, okay, this is going to be a pulse width modulated output for a servo. I've got to load the servo library as well. There we are, I've drawn that out upside down just to make sure I don't make any mistakes because obviously the Teensy's upside down. So I've got these ones free. Servo, servo driver library looks like it can run all of the pulse width modulated outputs that I need. So I'm going to get them loaded up into the software and then I'm going to start connecting things up. I can't wait because finally I can get the body, her body in here and sort out about the wiring and how to connect it and oh, that'll be so much fun. So I've added the servo library to the sketch, include servo. Then I've named, created um, five instances, head left, right, head up, down, eyes left, right, eyes up, down and eyes blink. And then, in the setup, after all these other bits and pieces to do with the audio stuff, I've attached each of those servo things to the necessary pin, and then I've set them to move to 90 degrees, which is halfway across, just as a starting point anyway. So that's all in setup. There was a slight issue in that it wouldn't compile properly with the not standard Arduino servo library kept coming up with errors saying it, when I actually checked what the errors said you know why bother um, it said that it wasn't compatible with the particular chip on the Teensy but thankfully Paul Sofragen, um who designed the Teensy um, has written an alternative servo driver library um, called PWM servo so I changed that and it has compiled perfectly and uploaded perfectly. So that's lovely. Now I can finally get on with getting everything wired up and installed. Dear Ziggy, she's so lovely. I just heard her crying and I uh, went to that she was standing at the back door because the chickens were upset by something. Perhaps they've seen a fox or a cat or something and they're all squawking and everything. And Ziggy still remembers her, the original chickens that she used to protect. In fact, to the extent where she would allow them to eat her own dog food while she stood by and watched. Because she really did care about them. And she still gets very upset when a chicken is heard or seen on the television. So she's still very protective towards them, which is so special. It's lovely. Bless her. Problem number one. I'm trying to work out how to get these cables. And if you remember... I bought this before because I thought that was a really nice, clever idea that could solve all sorts of things. As it happens, I've realised why there were so many options of this. It will not bend the other way. It only is flexible this way. And try as I might, I cannot work out how to get this to work in here. There's just not room and not being able to have it sort of zigzagging means that that's useless. And I also tried some of this, the shower hose stuff, because that's quite flexible and stretchy, but again, try as I might, I cannot figure, given the amount of room that I've got, how to get that to work. So I was thinking about using some more of this lovely fabric stuff that would work and just leaving the wires to sort themselves out as they turn because the thing is if I sit that in now that's normally going to be facing front so the wires are going to have to sort of make their own wires it turns that way 
and then pull round as it turns that way. So it's quite possible to leave them to their own devices, but obviously you can see them through the window. So I need to do something. Perhaps just get a load more of this stuff. Because the more you bunch them together, with what I've realised in the past as well, the more you bunch them together, the stiffer it becomes, because I've got some of that spiral binder and stuff, but that means it's just rigid. And I've also, in addition to this, obviously, got the wires from her head which are going to sit on top but luckily I've already put in some of this so I think that might be the way to go because it does look pretty as well it's a very hot dog kids have gone back to school and it is a heat wave it is absolutely boiling I think I've solved it I've increased the length of that copper braid stuff and notice that as this twisted round these wires would happily get tangled up in the gears and it was right round. So I just I had some of that, that copper pipe was bent round the back, so I've bent it vertically, added a bit, and now that just stops the wire from touching the gear. It's definitely time to start getting her head on here and this mounted on the bottom because I need to get everything in place. And because of the extra piece of wire for all her servos, I want to get that threaded through at the same time. I found that the um, pulley on the end of this was too wide to fit through this slot here but I just unscrewed these two um, bearings here so that's lovely, it's great having everything screwed together rather than glued so I've got that done and I thought, ah, oh, there's an extra ring meant to be on there this one what a pain, I've forgotten to poke the things through what do you do in that situation? Da -da, you cut a slot feed that through, fix it down at the back, no will be any the wiser. It's interesting looking at her, seeing the insides, I haven't looked at her upside down like that before, but you can see the servo motors and all the levers and things and linkages. It took so much effort to design it, it's really nice. Now, finally having a really good use for her. It's all coming together very nicely. I've got the four wires, a uh, head wire coming down inside there, not touching anything. Cable tied out the way of that, the pulley that runs her and makes her look up and down and that's just the strap comes over those two bearings perfectly aligned with that, I screwed that on. So I'll now stand her up. And the lovely thing about the Lazy Susan bear, look, she can go round and round and round and round. It's not exciting, always with her body facing the right way. Right, we've got her in position. We've got the four cables. I can't really see them because it's so dark. But they're there and she can turn around that way, that's fine. And she can turn around that way and that's fine. The thing is, so much could go wrong. Okay, three, two, one. She moved her head up. I haven't connected this, so she's still free to move. She's half closed her eyes, which is good, and her eyes are point pointing near centre. They were looking to the left, I think. So, actually, that could have worked pretty damn well. Right, it's a little bit of a struggle to get that pin in. Let's try this now. Well, that's not bad, is it? I'm sure I remember in the past, when I set up Victoria originally, that she kept fluttering or as the Arduino started up, all the servos would be going back and forth, but that isn't a problem this time. That's fantastic. Connecting them up or attaching them over to the pins and then immediately setting them to 90 degrees. That seems to be working really well. What's that noise I hear cry? That's the 3D printer, which is... They're completely hiding what it's printing, of course, because I've just come over to try and show you where you can catch a glimpse of it. I have a slightly large one I prepared earlier over here. It's printing two of these. Well, one of them at a time. Because if you remember, it's lucky that she's out here, Florence and the Is It Time for Tea Machine. I designed these, actually. Did all that photogrammetry and things because I wanted a shell lamp to illuminate her. 
So that's, and then subsequently I put them on Etsy because people said at the shows, steampunk shows, oh, do you sell them? Can we have, you know, where can we get them? So in the end, I ended, then started manufacturing them for people. And then and now there's four sizes. That's the biggest one. But looking at her, they look okay with her. But I think that Victoria, who's looking decidedly unwell, it's like she's had a bad night, far too much drinking and woken up the next morning. Um, slightly smaller, so luckily this is a 55mm high one. I also now got a 45mm high one which I'm going to be using right down to these little ones. Look at that, that's 20 mil 25mm high, which is lovely. And, and lots of people with those um, model Victorian style and um, puppet theatres, beautiful things, um, are buying these to illuminate them, just to row them along the front because I've managed to work out how to get an LED in each one, even the really small ones. That's the, the, the structure it builds it on. Because I noticed if it built it flat, you'd end up with a big pimple in the middle where it finished printing it. Whereas if you print it like that, the pimple ends up right on a little tip and it's not noticeable. Thing is, she wouldn't sing. Couldn't work out why, because she was before. You saw it in the last video. What have I done to stop her singing? So, an hour later, one, te one step forward, two back, is it, or the other way around? I finally sorted it out. Because if you remember, I'd been ever so careful to work out all the pins that the soundboard, the Teensy soundboard, required. All of them. Every conceivable one mentioned anywhere, and I avoided them, which just left me with the ones that I connected things up. But the problem comes, pin 17, it's a free digital or you know, standard GPIO output input thing. So I said, okay, I'll use that for the mouth solenoid. That was what was stopping everything. I commented out all these other bits with the servos thinking it would be something like that. I've just tried it, it started to tearing my hair out. Commented that out, everything works perfectly. Thank goodness for that. It's plucking. I've set it to manual tune A. And the laptop's powering the Teensy and the Teensy sound card, which is somewhere in there. The amplifier and the um, serial communication are coming through the pipe, and it is working. That's fantastic. And that, that's with the sketch, also, this sketch. Um, with all the attached servo motors so that, that it's absolutely fine with that. I've even found that using um, output number 16 or 16 as an output is fine as well. It just really wasn't happy with 17 and I cannot figure it out. It's a bit later. Victoria's still looking well the worse for wear. But I have built a thing. This is the thing here. It's a bit dark. There's an old-fashioned heat sink, well, a new-fashioned heat sink, and two of the Darlington transistors, one on either side. One to control her mouchoir, her mouth, and the other one to control the little motor that moves her body mechanism. Because obviously both take quite a lot of current, so I'm just going to test that. I've just tested and she still um, is resp responding to everything properly, so let's just touch that on 5 volts. Oh, that's good. Right, so that works, and the pink one, 5 volts, yeah, brilliant. So that's good, I didn't want to connect them up until I knew that she was working. So, let's go back to this bit, if I do set this to that, she immediately, hopefully she'll open her mouth as well, I'm not quite sure, but that's working, you can hear the, the pitch, and if I turn her off, so it stop everything, Perfect. So we know the serial communication. Now I suppose the next thing is to play melody. Let's just see if she comes. She's not going to move yet, but this is so exciting. It's so close now. Hopefully. Now yes. Brilliant. I haven't sorted out the timing yet. Oh, I just. I can't. Let me turn that off. I can't wait, it is just so exciting, having got the electronics wire, sorted out that problem with the Teensy, managed to get enough connections that seem to work, which is brilliant, and now 
I've got the freedom to sit here hunched over my lovely old laptop that takes four hours to start up and get her to move, blink, sing, talk, ah. Oh. And then, of course, after I've sort of sorted out and got familiar with all that, I'm tripping over my own words, then, of course, it's time for the person sensor. Oh, and then trying to get her to follow where it sees people. So as you sort of walk towards us, she'll turn and she'll look at you. I just can't wait. It's so exciting. But I'm glad that I have taken time. I keep talking about wallpapering for some unknown reason. But I'm glad that I've taken time to get all these different bits and pieces done step by step. I'm happy with them. Brilliant. I think it's time. That's time again to take the dog for a walk in the boiling heat. I think it's 32 degrees centigrade. Very autumnal I must say. This is all very exciting. It's another day and I now need to sort out the positions of all the servo motors max and min possessions. Arming and ahhing about thinking how can I do that and then found the one pin on the tinger that's still free can be used as an analogue input pin. It's fantastic. So with the aid of a potentiometer, I can now see her eyes moving. So I'm going to go through each servo motor and just work out the maximum minimum because I don't want to put any stress or strain on the um, servo mechanisms inside. It was all going so well until it wasn't because I cannot get the servo motor that drives the eyes up and down to work properly so I've got the lovely old oscilloscope out <laughs> it just weighs a ton it's warmed up and it's working and I thought I'd show you because I wanted to check the teens was outputting the right um, pulse width modulated output for the servo so I thought I'd just show you what that looks like so there you can see it with the as I move the potentiometer you can see it gets thinner the bit that's on but you can see and that's enough to control it or in this case not to control it I don't know why, it's an intermittent problem because it suddenly started working and her eyes were looking at them down and then they stopped again. Oh, don't you just hate intermittent problems, faults? Well, four out of five servos isn't bad, I suppose, but I've got to work this out. I mean, what's the point otherwise? How frustrating, but I'm so pleased that the TNZ is actually doing the right thing. So it's either a fault with the servo motor or a fault with the wiring to it, so do some more investigation. It's very odd it just suddenly started working and then suddenly stopped. Well, I've cut the signal wire to that particular servo and as I tweak the control of left and rightedness you can see it's moving. So the servo, the signal is getting up there. I just need to check that it's got power although all these three um, are connected together to the same power supply so I don't think that's a problem. I think it might actually be the servo for some reason. I can confirm that it is the servo motor because there's the power supply which is coming out at what it should be. Lovely. And we've set checked the signal so it's that wretched little servo that's the most difficult one to get to. Never mind, mustn't grumble. I've managed to get the new servo motor in. There's a very cunning way I managed to do this. There's a little grub screw there that you loosen that gives enough room for this shaft to push in, which gives enough room for this bit to slide out, and then it frees up the, uh, the servo motor. A cunning plan. So what I thought I'd do is to take to pieces the old one. I'll take the old one to pieces and see what's inside. So amazing. Look at these little screws. They're incredible. And there's the gears. There's the little motor that you've... There's the motor. It's something little. There's the motor. It's connected to a very clever circuit, a bit of circuit, and a potentiometer, a variable resistor, which was sitting bent over it. And then that little motor, motor drives some gears, long gear train, so it much, much more torque, and it still goes pretty fast anyway. And then um, one of the spindles comes down and turns the potentiometer, which tells the circuit how much further the motor needs to move until it reaches your desired position. Thank goodness for that. Brilliant. I finally managed to get the servos 
um, speeding up, accelerating and decelerating at the beginning and end of each move to make them look slightly more realistic and lifelike thanks to James Bruton's idea on YouTube um, and I did it in the end because stop on focusing each time the loop goes round it visits all these functions that basically somehow <laughs> add the current position to a new position, calculating it, which does all that. I tried most of yesterday to get my head around it, and I just can't. It should be so simple. As he said, it's two lines of code. Well, three, actually. Um, but that now works. So I'm very pleased about that. Um, and I have just written... I can't see them. Oh, here we are. I've just written a blink, a function to get her to blink, which has worked really nicely, actually. I'm very pleased with that. Hang on a minute. Manual focus at the ready. Um, it's this one. So it just keeps cycling through, because obviously with all these functions, I can't have anything blocking the rest of the Teensy from doing what it needs to do, so I can't use any delays. So I'm using millis instead, and I know I'm using, there are better ways of using them, but my brain is a muscle and I can't cope. So it goes, keeps cycling around in the loop, and then when blink milliseconds is smaller than the current time, in effect, it then goes through and sees if the eyes are closed, it tells them to open and sets a new blink millisecond for a random number to, between three and six seconds. Aha, I looked it up. That's the common br blink cycle for humans. If, however, they are open, it closes them and sets a much shorter cycle to revisit. So that they actually, it does create the blinking thing. And that looks like this. Now, that's not particularly stunning, although I am very pleased with it. You can see the acceleration deceleration, it, otherwise it would just zonk straight up and straight down. I think that would look wrong. So I'm very pleased with that. So that, in effect, is just a standalone thing. That can be getting on with blinking, whatever else she is doing at the time. Now, however, an issue has arisen, as I mentioned previously. When I first switch all this on, all of the server motors zoom just to some arbitrary position before it's, everything's had time to start up. So her eyelids that mustn't go above or below a certain value on the server motor, they cram themselves into her head. Sorry, I'm getting very emotive. And they move into her head and risk damaging the mechanism every time she's switched on. So I have got to, as it turns out, introduce a switch, an electronic switch, Darlington pair or whatever, to switch all the servo motors on once the teensy is properly powered up and is producing all the signals necessary for them. Otherwise she is going to get ruined. I think that's going to be enough for another video. So thanks so much for watching. It's very exciting getting it all coming together and solving issues and things as you go along. Um, if you've got any questions please do put them in the comments or any suggestions as long as they're polite. Um, I'm going to get on with this and in fact the next video what I've done is I've taken off all of the bits, all the software that plays the ukulele from the Teensy and just left it with stuff to control her head because otherwise it takes quite a long time to compile each sketch and upload it and I'm going to be doing lots of that as I sort of figure out how to make things work. So it's, I'm just going to do that and then I realise of course with the person sensor I can actually get the whole thing working because when I was on holiday I designed a, uh, I was trying to work out where to put the camera from the people sense, for the people sensor and I designed a nice uh, twirly sort of title engraved sign for uh, Victoria the automaton singing automaton um, with a note in the middle where I can drill a little hole and hide the camera behind it, the person sensor. That way it's stable, it's got a good view. Let's see how it works, it may not, but we'll give it a go. So that's next time's video. Looking forward to it. Thanks again.